Hi, I'm Natalie Spence. Welcome back to the Garden Club. One of the easiest, prettiest, maintenance-free perennial, it blooms in July and August, is the daylily. Today, Jeannie Gillis of Heritage Museums and Gardens is going to tell us all about daylilies, everything we need to know. My name is Jeannie Gillis. I'm the Director of Horticulture here at Heritage Museums and Gardens in Sandwich on Cape Cod. And I'm standing in one of our beautiful daylily gardens. This is the Blagboro Garden. These plants were donated to us by Dick and Joan Blagboro, and they are daylily nuts. So we've got a nice variety of yellows, reds, pinks, even creams. Well, right now we're looking at Fooled Me, and it's a beautiful yellow daylily with a red eye zone. And I think that's what's really hot right now, is people like to see daylilies with something extra. And as you know, uh, daylilies get the name from the Greek word hemerakalis, hemera meaning beauty for a day. And daylilies only bloom once and then they, the flowers fade. But then, as you can see by this photo, there's a beautiful bud that will replace it. Here at Heritage, the uh, bloom time begins the, about the second week in July and blooms well into the end of August. This is another beautiful daylily, uh, kind of a peachy pink, called Silken Touch. And the only thing you have to remember about daylilies is that the more sun you can give them, the more flowers they'll put out. But the beauty of daylilies is they'll, you can even sneak them into the shade. Uh, ideally, they like a six to eight uh, hours for sunlight, but as I said, they'll grow anywhere. Uh, the other thing you have to remember about daylilies is the more water you can give them, the more lush the growth will be and then hence the better the flowers. But you can grow them in a drought situation. They're perfect for traffic islands where you can't even get, get water to it. Uh, we like to fertilize our plants with 510-5 in the spring. I just get an all-purpose fertilizer and broadcast it through the gardens before the foliage comes up. Then if the gardens are going to be on display, we happen to use this garden a lot for weddings and parties, so I like this garden to look perfect. So we'll give it another application of a, of a water-soluble fertilizer right when the foliage is full and before the flower buds come. Now today we've actually deadheaded the garden for this video, and that's a simple process. You just snap the faded flowers. Now that's not a faded flower, but early in the morning you can see the faded flowers. Now this isn't a necessary task, but because we are a public garden, we always like to look our best. In your own garden, if you're hosting a cocktail party or having friends over for tea, it just improves the overall appearance to just knock off the faded flowers. Now one of the fun things about daylilies is that they come in all different shapes and sizes. I'm standing in front of a mini one called Cricket Dance. And I love the minis in the garden. Uh, they're easy to cut and arrange in flower arrangements, but they're even really fun to cook with. All parts of the daylily plant are edible. And what's fun to do is to take a little mini and make some chicken salad or any kind of a salad you like and stuff the mini daylilies with a chicken salad. And then you have a party, you can pop these in like mini hors d'oeuvres. For the most part, daylilies do not have any diseases or pests. They have a few, but I usually tell people just to look the other way. One of the things that happens early in the season is a, uh, a process called spring sickness. And the daylily experts really don't understand what it is, but what happens is the new leaves turn brown. The beauty of daylilies is you can just go in with your clippers and snip those off. Fortunately for us, the daylilies continue to pump out new growth. Now the other thing that sometimes is problematic with daylilies is a little pest called a thrip. And the hard part about thrips is that they do their damage in the buds and you don't see them chewing. But when the beautiful flower opens, you'll see a little white clear spots on the flower color. Almost looks like someone took a paintbrush with bleach and dabbed each one. Now I can't find an example right now, but I'm sure we have it. For the most part, you don't have to worry about it. However, if you are exhibiting in a flower show or maybe your garden is on tour for um, awards, you would want to get rid of those. Uh, so keep your eyes open. Other than that, daylilies are very easy care. Now we're standing in our beautiful daylily garden, but I invite you to come back anytime to Heritage Museums and Gardens. Uh, we're open daily 10 to 5, and we have something in bloom every day of the year.